Now, how to solve for hourly rate? Hourly rate is cargo to load from the past hour minus cargo to load present hour. So, for example, if you have uh, remaining on board at 48850 at 0800, you subtract that if you've taken or loaded uh, for one hour, cargo to load is 47700. So your rate will be 1150. Okay, early rate. So we're talking about in one hour, how much have we loaded? Okay, understood? In one hour, how much have we loaded? Then, next, how to solve for average rate naman. Previously, it was hourly rate. In one hour, how much have we loaded? Okay. And next one is how to solve for average rate. When we talk about average rate, for from the start, for example, it started, the loading started at 0812 and completed at 1200. So that is 3 hours and... 48 minutes okay how much have you loaded for three hours and 48 minutes example 0 100 you have loaded an early rate of 1150 so naturally because you have just started your average rate will only be 1150 and then at 0 200 your early rate became 1200 cubic meters therefore you add these two and then divide it by two. Everyone, kindly please execute on your calculator. One seven <clears throat> one one five zero plus one two hundred divided by two one one seven five. This two, this two. Uh, average rate differs with early rate. Okay, average rate differs with early rate. Eto, it is 1150 because you do not have to divide because the cargo loading has just started. So with the average rate, you compute for the hourly rate, multiply it to how many rows or hours equivalent to average rate. Next, how to solve for cargo on board. Okay, cargo on board or remaining on board. Pass our figure of cargo on board plus present rate, okay? Equals cargo on board. For example, your cargo on board is 1150. Cargo to load mo ay 48850, okay? Your early rate on that certain hour is 1150. Early rate mo siyempre will be 1150. It because you have just started. Now, at second hour, your cargo on board is 2300. Okay? Cargo to load is 47700. And hourly rate is 1150. Average rate, 1150, of course, because nothing has changed. 1150 plus 1150 divided by 2, it will still be the same. So, we're talking about the cargo on board. How to take cargo on board? It's either you subtract 50,000 cubic meters minus 47,700 equal to cargo on board. Okay? Questions? Or for, from the past hour, 1150, second hour, it will still be 1150 because the rate here is 1150. That will be equivalent to 23. Still the same. Okay? There are many methods. It will depend on you. But just follow this method. It is much easier. Okay? 1150 plus 
your hourly rate will be present cargo on board. Next, estimated time of completion. So we're talking about the ETC. We're talking about time. Cargo to load divided by present rate equals hours plus the present hour and date. So, for example, present date and time is 3.13 in the morning, 04 October 2022. Your cargo to load is 47,700 divided to 1150, which is your present rate. That will be equivalent to 41.48 hours. So, in 41.48 hours, you add the time. No? 41.48, you add the time. 3.30. So, it will become 44.98 uh, hours. Okay? 48 minutes. So, dapat mali ah. 41.48 hours. 47,700 divided by 1150. 41.48, okay, plus 3 is equal to 44, minus 44 is equal to 0.47, plus 0.5, tama, 0.98, why did it become 0.98, because 30 minutes is 0 0.5 hour, understood, yes, following, or do I have to explain further, <laughs> it is correct, Okay, uh, 30 minutes is 0.5, you divide it to 6, it will give you 0.5. Why? Because 1 hour, 60 minutes, right? Okay. Now, 44.98 minus 24. Why do you have to subtract 24? Because you have to add one day, okay? So, from October 4, it became October 5. Following? And then, it is equivalent to 20.98 hours. Subtract 20, so that it becomes 05 October 2000. Okay? After that, it will become 0.98 hours. Multiply it to 60, because it is a decimal in hour. It will become 58.7 minutes. So, 2059 rounded off. Following. All right. That is all about the uh, basic calculation of the loading lock or loading rate. Now, let's discuss discharging lock, meaning unloading. Okay, it is almost the same. Uh, there's just some uh, basic difference. First, cargo to discharge 50,000 cubes, density in back 0.72. Almost same. How to solve for cargo on board? Cargo on board is the cargo to discharge figure as per loaded, meaning kung ano yung kinarga mo, okay, you had your allege, alleging, nagkaroon ka ng alleging, and with that, you already have your cargo figures bago ka pa mag-discharging, tama? Okay, so minus cargo discharge, so it depends kung anong oras ka nagsimula, you subtract it, so per hour, gentlemen, per hour ay kinukuha natin ang figure whether loading or discharging man yan. And then, it will be equivalent to your cargo on board. Example, 50,000 cubes minus 1150 equivalent to 48850. Next, number two. How to solve for hourly rate? Hourly rate is cargo on board past hour, from the past hour, minus cargo on board present hour. So, for example, kaninang alas 8, your cargo figure is 48850. 
And then, at 0,900, your cargo figure is 47,700. Just subtract, then you will have your rate. Meaning to say, in one hour, you have discharged 1,150 cubic meters. Clear? Then, next. Next, we solve for, again, average rate number three. Add all hourly rates from the start to present time divided by the number of hours from the start. Okay? Ibig sabihin, kung ilang oras ka mula simula, up to your present rate, you can solve for your average rate. So, hourly rate, 1150 plus 1200 divided to 2, for example, because it's only 2 hours, what will be your average rate? Kindly please check if it's correct. So, it's correct. 1175 cubic meters. <coughs> Next. How to solve for cargo discharge? Formula is total cargo to discharge, meaning your remaining on board. Minus cargo on board, okay? The cargo on board for the present time will be equivalent to your total cargo discharge. For example, no? before the start of the discharging, before the start of the discharging, your figure is 50,000 cubic meters. Now, after 24 hours at 0,900, your remaining on board or cargo on board is 37,000. You just subtract. So that means in 24 hours, you have discharged 13,000 cubic meters. Okay? Following? Yes? All right. Now, again, we have the ETC, the estimated time of completion. Present date and time, 3.30-04 October 2022. Okay? So... Cargo to discharge, meaning kargada para ididiskarga pa lamang, is, is 47,700 cubic meters. Divide it to the rate. Kung ilan ang rate mo, this is your rate. 1150. So kung ang rate mo is 1,150, divide mo yung cargo to discharge, it, it will be 41.48 hours. Okay? And then, so, ibig sabihin, matatapos ka after 41.48 hours from 3.30 in the morning, 04 October 2022, or your present time, kung 04 October ngayon, but it's not. So, therefore, you add it. Bakit dinagdag? Para, from the present time, up to the time to discharge all the cargoes with that present rate. So you have 44.98 hours. Subtract it to 24 because one you add one day from October 4, it will become October 5. And then remaining is 20.98 hours. Subtract again 20. 0, 05 October, you have 20 hundred already. Now solve for the minutes. 0. 0.98 times 60 is again. 58.7 minutes or 05 October 2059. Okay? Okay. Look at the clock right now. Everyone. What time is it? Huh? Okay, so lahat by navigation or cargo, lahat yan by divisible by 6. Everyone, so, anong date 
26. 26 from the present time, 0906. 26 October. Calculate the estimated time of completion with this figure. So, plus, then, plus, minus 24. <coughs> plus, October 26, so it will become 7 minus 24. Okay. What's the answer? Tell me. From 0906, 26 October, what is the ETC? with the given cargo figure on board or remaining on board and rate anybody David Mark Hills Alleging or the measurement, okay, specifically the measurement of the tanks. Uh, Ramon, bawal kasi sa dahil sa COVID protocol. Noon ka na lang, ha? Sorry. Okay. Alleging with the use of UTI. 
Okay, UTI is not what you think like the in the medical that uh, that is urinary tract infection. No, it is not UTI like that. Okay? So LH is the volume which is when which is left empty in a tank so that there's space for the liquid in the tank to expand. The air space between the oil surface, there's the oil surface here. And the top of the tank is known as the allage. Keeping the fuel storage tank full at all times keeps the allage at the top of the tank to a minimum. So again, yesterday, you've encountered sounding or image. Okay? Kapag balas tank ang pinag-uusapan, the term used commonly is sounding. But if it's cargo, it is image. Okay? From the sea surface up to the tank top side, it is measured as allage. Now, we have the allage table on board. With this allage table, they are calibrated from the, uh, with the length, width, and the height of the tanks. Kung saan barko man siya, specifically, it is calibrated like that. And it is measured up to the alleging point. Okay? It is not just measured up here, but some calibration table are measured up to the alleging point. Meaning, if you use your UTI there, okay, because the UTI comes from the alleging point. It doesn't come from the deck level itself, okay? There is a certain height, like this, or some are like this, okay? It depends, but that is already pre-calculated, all right? Moving on. The basic explanation on LH and NH is that when measuring level by LH method, the sounding tape is inserted only till the bob tape touches some part of the liquid top surface. Instead of measuring the whole depth of the tank, only the free space. Okay? Hindi mo kailangan i-measure ang NH or the sounding. You only have to measure the LH. Kasi given na nga ang Length, width, and height, and with that, mayroon tayong tinatawag na allage table. Okay? So, look at the diagram. There's a readout point, zero allage, no? Depende on. Uh, here is the allage from here up to here. And then, dito, what is there is a toxic vapor or a gas. And then, you can measure the temperature lower, middle, upper. Okay, when you use the UTI. And of course, some other cargo, some other cargo, when loaded, they have water. Okay? With that, you have to deduct from the computation. Knowing that the density uh, of oil is slightly lighter than the water. Okay? So, we have the oil water interface. So, ang mangyayari sa UTI mo is that magbiblink siya namang magbiblink. Instead of an ordinary blinking uh, na tuloy-tuloy, medyo intermittent yung uh, uh, ringing ng sound ng UTI. Now, that is what you call a UTI. UTI means <coughs> Alex. Oh, what you do? Morning, sir. Morning, morning. Okay guys, may update lang ako no? Since wala si Sir Doc, baka hindi matuloy muna yung kainan natin okay. May CSR sila sa Davao, so he is not here until weekend Ang sayang naman Kasi siya magbabayad eh. Diba? <laughs> Hindi naman ako magbabayad. Oh, anyway, next time na lang. Ha? Marami pa namang kain ang madadaanan natin. Okay? Saan ka na banda, Mars? Sir. Yep. Um, about our stay, sir, in our hotel, sir, um, are we allowed to be extended, sir, to Saturday, sir? To Saturday? Yes, okay, sir, because... Um, Mag-advise na ba kayo kay Ma'am Ana? Oh, we inform Ma'am Ana, sir, but we still... Wala pang reply. Sige, follow up natin. Ano? 
What about the uh, yung mga nag-visa? Naging successful ba lahat? Walang na-deny? May hindi pa na nakapag-apply sa pressure hands. Meron pa pero wala pa yata kayong schedule eh. Tahintayin nyo na lang. Okay, advice November. naman kayo. So, so far until this week, uh, baka November na yung magiging schedule ninyo. November 21, sir. Ah, meron na? Yes, sir. Ah, okay. Meron naman na pala. So, hintayin nyo na lang kasi hindi hindi naman natin kasi basta-basta mailagay kung saan date. Kung saan lang yung bakante doon sa slot ni US Embassy. Doon lang din tayo makakapag-book ng appointment. So, pero ipapacheck natin, if ever na may mga earlier schedule na pwede kayong isinyo, then i-advise naman nila kayo. Minsan kasi may nag-open na slot eh. No? Bakit? Kasi nag nagpostpone yung isa no? dahil hindi pa naman kailangan. Ganun. So, na-move forward. Uh, na-move yung ano. Kaya may mga nag-open din na slot. So, kumusta naman yung natutunan ninyo kay Sir Mars? Ah, hindi hindi ba lumulusot lang sa tenga ninyo? Ah, baka mamaya, sa sampung araw na nandito kayo, ay pagdating sa dulo ay walang natutunan ba? <laughs> Sayang naman yung in-spend nating araw dito. Okay. So, most probably tomorrow we will have also a short session with... Uh, I don't know kung si kung available si Alan Jensen no, or si Luni no, or designated person na siya. Pero nasa India yun sila at saka nasa Denmark. No. So kung sino lang atin sa kanila but at least nandito dito kayo. No. We will be, you will be talking to them also. Live, uh, ano yun, uh, online lang naman yun natin gagawin. Si Captain Roy, sir. Amy meet niya sila. Pwede naman. Last I-invite ko si Captain Roy. Ah, kasabay tayo dito. Um, pwede naman, ihiwalay natin siya. Sa last day. Just for 30 minutes. Kahit mamaya siya, try natin. Mamaya siya. Ay, baka wala siya dito. Wala siya. May hearing sila sa ano, sa labas. Check natin. Anong may simulay pa tayo na? Uh, yes sir, after the explanation sa cargo, hmm. ang plano ko sir is, kasi after dalawa na tapos yung loading. Yung iba nagka-calculate, yung iba doon para uh, hindi sayang yung oras nung nandito. Yeah. Tapos pagkatapos naman doon, sila naman dito, then sila naman sa sana mo. So, pero isa lang ang discussion na ginawa nyo? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ito, para, ito yun sir, sa current book calculation. Okay. So, ayan ah. Pasensya na lang at wala yung boss natin. Na. Pero kung ililibre tayo ni, sino may birthday dito ngayon? <laughs> Meron may birthday ngayong week na to eh. Ah, ganun ba sir? Meron ba? Yung si Jan Neil, oh! Happy birthday mo? Wednesday. Uy, last day, oh! Surprise day na lang tayo. Saan mo kami i-libre? Nabibigay ka ako. Saan mo kami i-libre? Anyway, yes. Okay lang yan. Basta nakakapag-birthday pa rin tayo. Importante, may birthday. Yung walang birthday, yan ang delikado. Kaya hindi tayo ng birthday. Yes, sir. Okay. So, balikan ko na lang kayo mamaya. And okay na kayo sa rock. May kulang pa, sir, na hindi pa nakagawa ng short spice. So, what about the thighs? Ah, yes, sir. Ah, bends, hitches, overhand nuts, mga natapos sa mga natapos. Okay, so at least meron kayong natutunan, no? Site reduction. Sa bridge bukas and last day, sir. Ang site reduction? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yung last two days. Sa akin yung bridge bukas, sir, sa Cal Friday, sir, di ba? Hmm. Kasi sa cargo na. Sa cargo na. Yes, sir. Okay, so, yes, continue. So moving on, so ito yung itsura ng UTI no? or the Allage Temperature Interface. So what is UTI? It measures the temperature and the oil-water interface, meaning the interface between the oil and water. And it has a sensor probe, okay? measurement tape, display unit, and uh, winding drum. Ibig sabihin, 
uh, pwede mo siyang i-lower, i-wind up, and i-hoist up. No? I-wind down and hoist up to measure the allage for the scissor face. Ang tape length niya, it can vary. It's uh, up to 15 meters to 20, 40 meters. But uh, meron na tayo on board and other surveyors, they bring their own UTI. Okay? With that, you have to inform the uh, CCR or chief officer. But we still have to calculate as per our UTI, kung ano yung UTI na ginagamit natin. Temperature range, uh, you take upper, middle, and lower. Okay? It can work with negative uh, 40 degrees Celsius up to 110 degrees Celsius depending on the manufacturer noong UTI na gamit mo. And then, these UTIs have annual shore service. Okay? And uh, after the calibration or the checking, nagkakaroon tayo ng certificates. And these certificates are being requested always during loading or discharging by the surveyor or the loading master. Uh, photocopy lang naman. And that will be uh, one of your jobs, you must prepare the documents, photocopying, and everything. So open, restricted, or closed type. Uh, with the allergen, mayroong open type and mayroong closed type. Mayroong ibig sabihin, uh, there are UTIs that are already pre-installed kung nasaan yung tanki mo. But uh, with the removable, okay, pwede yung tanggalin mo rin yan. Conversion fittings for UTIs can be purchased. Earth grounding capabilities for safety implications. Uh, like what we've discussed last week, meron yung uh, anti-grounding na nilalagay. After you connect this, you connect it to the allergen point. In order to avoid, what is that? Static electricity. Alright. And these are the compliance rules. SOLAS, OCIMF, IMO, Okay. Marble, etc. We're not gonna go through this. This is an example of allage table. Allage table page. Okay? It is an example of allage table page. You can just interpolate. These are the allage in centimeter. So from 400 centimeter, that is 4 meters. And this is the trim by the stern. 0.5 or even kill ka. Okay, even kill meaning your forward draft is same as your aft draft. Meaning, you will take the measurement of the cargo on this column, tabulated with the allage. Understood? Following? Alright. Now, there are cases that, well, it's a no-no. No? There are cases na yung tanke natin is listed to port side or starboard side. Mostly, we do it upright before the alleging or the measurement of the cargo itself. Okay? That's why officers, junior officers, third officers, second officers, chief officers are very wary when it comes to finalization of the stability of the vessel. It has to be upright. Kasi ganyan, napakahirap siya i-measure. Okay? Not unless if your gauging instrument is in the center of the tank. Sir, gano'n ba yung ating discussion? And of course, may cases na train by the stern pa rin, no? Uh, Siyempre kasi kapag nag-stripping ka, no? nag-stripping ka ng cargo tanks mo, you should be trained by the stern kasi yung well, 
for your sum all sum is nasa bandang po ba yan okay ASTM tables use okay ito yung tura ng ASTM tables ASTM tables okay po sir uh, stands for American Standard of Testing and Materials okay so you will be using these tables some are digital and some are uh, hard copies you do not need to write because I will just show you just to be familiar kayo at maging aware so there are series table 5 and 6 for API degrees American Petroleum Institute in Sabina okay degrees Fahrenheit Series 2, Table 23 and 24, it talks about the relative density in Fahrenheit. Series 3, 53 and 54, kJ per centimeter cube and density degrees Celsius at 15. And Volume 11, Entry with API Gravity, American Petroleum Institute Gravity. And those are the tables under that. Okay? Uh, entry with relative density. Uh, volume 12 and then volume 13 lubricating oils and 14 lubricating oils for 53d and 54d so some are uh, connected with engine room sa bumper okay remember normally density or api is provided density or api is provided by the terminal or surveyor in the loading ports and what is used will be dependent on the region port of loading. For example, in USA, Canada, Persian Gulf, API usage is prevalent, while entire of Europe and Asia uses density at 15 degrees Celsius. So meaning, sa America, Canada, Persian Gulf, ang gamit ay API sa pag-salt ng cargo, and it is not by density. Sa atin, sa Asia and Europe, density at 15 degrees Celsius. Okay, uh, there's what we call the volume correction tables, table A and table B. Table A is for crude, table B is for products, okay? Write it down, table 6A and 6B are used when the API of cargo is given. If the API is observed, is at observed temperature, then it is converted into API at 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Meaning, if you use API, it is in Fahrenheit by using 5A and 5B. The API at 60 degrees Fahrenheit is used to enter 6A or 6B tables against the observed temperature to obtain the BCF. BCF is volume correction factor. Okay? Mayroong correction factor for you to take into standard volume. So, when the gross observed volume is multiplied by the BCF or the volume correction factor, the gross standard volume is obtained. Meaning, GOV multiplied to BCF or the volume correction factor, kung ilan man yun, it will be your gross standard volume. The unit for volume used in this case is for is barrels for API, not barrels. Knowing that barrels is also a unit of volume. And for temperature, it is in Fahrenheit. Okay? So remember, kapag API ang gamit, and we're talking about volume, it is in barrels. So pwede siyang gross barrels, pwede standard or net barrels. And with API ang gamit, ang temperature naman, it is not in degrees Kelvin, degrees Celsius, but it is in degrees Fahrenheit. Now, this is uh, table 6B. Okay? Table 6B, example, if API at 60 degrees Fahrenheit, API gravity ang binigay is 66. Temperature, 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So, your Volume correction factor is 0 0.9748. Understood? Okay. Uh, 
Now we go to table 24A and 24B. This one is for the specific gravity. Write it down. Important ito mga to. So API, specific gravity, and then the density. Others, we will try to skip. Table 24A and B are used when the specific gravity of the cargo is given. So kapag specific gravity, 24A and B. Just remember, table ni Kobe Bryant, 24. Okay? Specific gravity. Specific gravity of observed temperature converted to specific gravity at 60 degrees Fahrenheit by use of table 23A or 23B. Si Jordan naman, no? Specific gravity at standard temperature is entered against the observed temperature to obtain the volume correction factor. <clears throat> when the GOB is multiplied by the BCF from obtained from 24A or 24B, kasi specific gravity ang binigay, the gross standard volume is obtained. Okay? Again, unit is barrels, temperature is Fahrenheit. Now, this is an example of table 23, specific gravity reduction. Now, we go to the density. Write it down, 24A and, uh, 54A and 54B. That is the table used when the density in vacuum is given. The density of cargo at observed temperature converted to converted to density 15 degrees Celsius by using table 53A or 53B. The density at standard temperature is entered against observed temperature to obtain volume correction factor. So you are again looking for the volume correction factor if you will be using 54A and 54B or 53A or 53B. When the GOB is multiplied by the BCF, again, obtain, now, now obtain mo siya sa 54A o 54B, again, kapag 54A, that is crude. 54B, that is clean products. The GSB is obtained, or the gross standard volume. Now, for the unit of volume on the 54A and 54B, it is in cubic meters. So if you go to Philippines, Asia, or Europe, it will be 54A and 54B. And it will be degree Celsius and cubic meters. You go to US, Canada, it will be an API. Unit will be barrels and temperature will be Fahrenheit. Okay, so meron tayong tatlong natutunan. Those tables. Ano yun? Table 6A and B. 6A and B. 24 A and B or 23, <coughs> then 54 A and B. And then, what are the units? Density, specific gravity, API. Okay? The unit of volume, cubic meters, barrels. Okay? Again, crude oil products, table A. Generalized oil or clean products, clean cargo, table B. So this is an example of table 54B, density 0 0.816, temperature 34. Okay, so while measuring, doon sa UTI, in average mo upper, middle, lower, ang kalalabasan ng average temperature mo is 34. And with that, with that, the density Binigay ito ni surveyor or the loading master or from the terminal. It is 0 0.816. With that, you have a volume correction factor or factor for correcting volume at 15 degrees Celsius. Parehas lang, di ba? Remember, that is BCF. You will get 0 0.9830. Questions? None? So this is uh, next topic is tanker cargo calculations. We, we now come to the main event. So first, let me discuss the unit of weights. Weights is different with volume. Volume is length times width times height. Weights, it can be in 
metric tons, long tons, or short tons. And weight can be measured in air or in vacuum. Remember, with increase in temperature, okay, the volume increases, the density decreases. Nakikita niyo to? Volume increases, density decreases. With decrease in temperature, meaning malamig, your volume decreases or being compressed. And then your density increases. Understood? So we're talking about the volume, the density, and then the temperature. Always remember, if you are in a cold area, what happens to your cargo? It tends to be compressed. Okay? Meaning, there will be lesser cargo when it comes to volume. But the density increases. When you go in a hot area or a torrid zone, okay, the volume expands. It is not compressed, but it, it expands. Okay? And then the density also otherwise decreases. So converting weight in vacuum to weight in air or vice versa, First page of the AS team table 56 provides a factor for converting weight in vacuum to weight in air and vice versa. Then, first step, what do we do on board? Of course, we measure. We measure or we do the alleging. Okay, alleging. We take the measurement from the cargo surface up to the top side of the top or take to the measuring point. Then we take also the temperatures and then solve for the mean or average or the arithmetic mean temperature. Okay, example, we have on three starboard, LH 1.5, meaning 1.5 na lang yung space from the cargo sea surface, as uh, cargo surface up to the uh, deck level, uh, top, top level of the tank. Corrected LH 1.5, same, wala siyang water, okay, walang trim, walang lease, and then uh, mean temperature is 34. Then what's added is observed volume. So how did we get the observed volume? We refer or tabulate it from the LH table. Understood? We tabulate it with the LH table. So 1.5 equivalent to volume 2,654.4 cubic meters. Then, next, just look on the uh, tables. With observed volume 2654 on 3 starboard, the density at observed temperature is 0 0.9095. Okay? How did that happen? Look. Let's say the cargo surveyor has provided us with a density at, at, at a particular temperature, meaning binigay niya yung density at a particular temperature and correction factor. Density at 25 is 0 0.9155, meaning on this temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, your density is 0 0.9155. The density correction factor ay binigay niya din, 0 0.0006 per degree Celsius. Okay. Okay, class. So, uh, break muna tayo and then lipat tayo sa simulator room. Dali na lang ako muna dali. Dali na lang tayo. Okay lang sir, okay lang. May TV naman doon sir, muna ko. May TV naman doon. Dilipat muna natin ito. Post ko muna ito. Sige, sir. Bakit dala nga ito doon? Ito mga ano. Ayaw. 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 Aya